We've been talking about Youth Live for a long, long time, and Unity Care, of course, and the founder and CEO for Unity Care, Andre Chapman, is here to talk to us. Congratulations on your 25th anniversary. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. We really appreciate uh, you having me here this morning to talk about this. And You know, it's really gratifying. I'm, I'm putting myself in your head, but it must be to give up a job that you were successful at, but you felt you weren't satisfied with, and to do something you really love and to have it be so successful and to help so many young people all these years. Absolutely. I, I think it was the inspiration of, um, you know, wanting to always give back and um, having, uh, you know, a tech career, but then wanting to do something to have an imprint and opening up our foster, our first foster home and on August uh, 14th of 1993 and running parallel careers for about six, seven years, you know, doing high tech during the day and being in on the weekends and the evening time, spending time with the foster youth. Um, one day, you know, God spoke to me and said, you know, you, you can't serve two masters. You got to make a decision here. And I, I walked away from tech to focus on uh, really having an impact in the community and growing unity care and serving more kids. Yeah, it's how you define success. It really is. You know, you can define success by how much money you make or how much good you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have any idea how many lives you've touched, how many young people you've helped? Well, you know, we serve thousands and thousands of kids annually. I mean, just last year we served 7,632 youth and families came through our doors. Um, So I don't really have a, a, a total number of how many we served over 25 years, but tens of thousands of young folks have been touched by the work that we do. Uh, here in the community. Does anything stand out, a group of kids, a certain kid that you've helped along the, along the way? Oh, absolutely. You know, what's interesting is that we've just uh, recently brought back uh, the first group of seven young men. They're men, well, they're men today, but they were young boys that were 16, 17, 18 that came in 25 years ago. And we had a, a sit down with them and a chat, which is going to be a video that will be shown at our event. But it was an opportunity to just reflect back on where they've gone in their journey and where they are today and the success that they feel in in accomplishing their goals. And, you know, they're working, their parents, their dads, fathers, and, um, you know, living the the, the dream of of feeling connected and loved and um, empowered to do something and make a difference. And so we have many stories like that along this journey. Uh, We have uh, youth that were youth in our program that today work for us as managers in the organization. So there's so many of those stories of young people that, we have um, impacted that are now doing something to give back. Those are tough years, uh, those teen years. And uh, I don't even want to imagine what might have happened to those kids if they hadn't found a little guidance along the way. Well, you know, it's, it, that's true, Sam. I mean, it takes one person. I mean, every you know, youth is either one adult, uh, a positive adult role model from success, or you know, not having that positive adult role model, um, you know, they find themselves on the streets or in prison. Uh, because there's no one person there to really guide them and give them the direction and the support, uh, the accountability, the love, the compassion to sh- give them a vision of what life can be and expose them to opportunities that oftentimes they just don't have access to. You know, I always say kids can't pick their parents, right? And so we have to step in those gaps and be, you know, those positive role models and those parents that give them a vision of what life can be and the blessings that they are to people and access and exposure to you know, what does college look like? What does working at Cisco or Facebook or Intel look like? And if they don't see that, if they're not getting the opportunity to be around people that can give them that vision, then they can't see themselves in those roles. Yeah. It's a challenge even in the best of circumstances to be a teenager. But, you know, in the worst of circumstances, it's good when somebody can come along and put their arm around them and say, uh, let's talk about this. Yes, you're right. I mean, it's, it's a it's a challenge even today with our youth, uh, even in two-parent working households, right? And so... Um, it takes a village. It really takes a community to wrap their arms around, uh, particularly the foster youth that we serve, to show them the love, care, and compassion and the support for them to be um, young, successful adults. And that's a video I want to see. And uh, right now we can only see it at this event coming up. <laughs> Absolutely. You've only got a couple of tables left, I hear. And how do we get them? Yeah, so uh, Unity Care is, uh, you know, Youth Live uh, is our... Um, key uh, event. It's it's our seventh annual event this year. But what's unique about this? It's also it's a celebration of our 25 year journey. The event's going to be on August 25th, and which is exactly 25 years to the month that we accepted our first youth into our program. So the event's going to be focused on 
just this journey and, and our gratitude for the people that have been along the way. But also, we're going to be acknowledging, you know, some key people that have been instrumental to the organization. And so we have our keynote speaker, Stedman Graham, who is um, very connected to the work that we do. He's a social worker by trade, but he's a, a well-known author, and he talks about personal identity and, and how do you empower people to take control of their life. Um, we're also going to be honoring uh, Roy Clay Sr., who was the, a long-term member of the Silicon Valley. He was He started the first computer division at Hewlett Packard um, back in the 60s. And he's been a mentor to the organization uh, for uh, going back to when we first started. And then we're going to have a young lady that's going to, just a phenomenal young lady who's grown up in the foster care system and is that 0.000% of a, a youth that accomplishes a goal of going to college, but not only to college, but going to Stanford. And she's going to just blow people's mind on her journey and you know the struggles, but you know, with the right people around her, her ability to accomplish what we all want our kids to do is go to college, but not only just go to college, but go to, a, you know, one of the best institutions uh, on, on the globe and and then where she's at today. And so it's going to be a phenomenal uh, evening. We have youth talent. As always, we have a young lady that's freshman at Los Gatos High School that won the South Bay Teen Idol competition. Uh, she's going to sing and we have other uh, youth that are going to sing. And then we're going to you know, sell the youth art and um, because art is so therapeutic for our youth. And so we're going to have the display of, of the art that they have spent the last six months canvassing their feelings and their emotions and their into art. And so that's going to be on display. So it's going to be a great evening and we're going to have a lot of great things going on. And, and we're going to hear stories from people that have been a, along this journey from uh, Ronnie Lott to Bill DiBaggio to uh, the Sobratos. Um, we're excited about the evening. It's going to be a really special evening uh, culminating on August 25th of this year. August 25th is the date for Youth Live and it's the 25th anniversary. That's exciting. I had the honor of co emceeing a few years ago. And I have to tell you from my own personal experience, it's a multidimensional celebration. It really is. There's so much to do and see. You just can't sit still. You've got to walk around. You've got to see the art. You've got to experience what's going on and then you get a great show with all these young talents who can we had you had some amazing singers that year in fact the young girl who just uh recently when the warriors absolutely played in the playoffs she sang the national anthem yes yes and she you know after our event and i'm sure it wasn't our event but uh our event was along her journey of where she was going she moved to hollywood yeah. And now she's acting and singing in Hollywood. So we just saw her come sing for the Warriors uh, anthem uh, a few weeks back. So, yes, we have some phenomenal talent. The, you know, our kids, you know, the, even, the evening, Sam, is about celebrating just the the talent and the true um, abilities of our youth and, and celebrating them and telling them how great and fortunate they are and, um, and letting them know that, um, you know, they're a blessing. And so the evening is really about our youth and making sure that we're, we're there to, to support them and help raise money to keep doing the work that we're doing and do it for another 25 years. You know, it, it seems to grow every year. Uh, it was a big event when uh, I co emceed that one time, and now it's even bigger with Stedman Graham and Roy Clay, as you mentioned, who's an icon right. in the Silicon Valley. And so I wonder what it was like the first time you had a youth live celebration. How can, can you compare the two? Yeah, I sure can. I think, you know, the, the first year, uh, which was great, we had Patrick Willis at our first event. Patrick Willis is, a, is a, as we know, he was the all-star linebacker at the 49ers and himself grew up in foster care. So it was great that um, he uh, partnered with us and he was our um, uh, our keynote speaker. And, um, but when I think back to that first year when, you know, it was a vision, uh, Kathy Linton was our, uh, our development director that had this vision around youth live and, uh, what is youth live? And, and so that first year was just, you know, when you do something for the first time, you're, you're at awe, but you know, there's so many things you can do better. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we've perfected a, after seven years, uh, just a great experience. I mean, it's just a fun event. It's exciting. There's energy and there's so many things for the community to come out and make a statement that we're here tonight because we want to do something to support these, the, the youth, the foster youth of this community. And we're going to, we're going to make a statement with our feet and we're going to be there. And then we're going to make a statement with our wallet because we want to raise money for these kids. And that's what it's all about. You do a good, great job. You do really do a great job. Um, 
Uh, it, it made me think, Roy Clay, Roy Clay made me think of uh, the story that Carl Davis told me hmm. uh, from the Silicon Valley Black Chamber. Roy was actually turned down for his first job because they didn't have a position for a professional person of color. Absolutely. And he came out here, Hewlett Packard saw something in him, and and he paid the Silicon Valley back big time. Absolutely, absolutely. That's a wonderful success story. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Clay is an icon in this valley, as you said earlier. He is, um, he has helped um, diversify this valley. Um, he was a founder of Rodale Electronics. And um, in 1997, um, soon after his wife passed away, Virginia Clay, uh, we launched the Virginia Clay Unity Care Golf Classic, and we 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 did a golf classic in honor of his wife from 1997 to 2005. And um, I grew up in Palo Alto, so I grew up in the Clay household. And so uh, there was a, a lot of um, um, you know I've always looked at him as a dad to me. And so his success was something that I always envisioned myself. And it goes back to what I said earlier about you just need to have. Uh, access and opportunities for young people to be able to see themselves and see what their future could look like. And for me, that was Mr. Clay, you know, seeing a successful African-American entrepreneur, um, which, you know, back then <laughs> in the in the 70s, you don't you didn't oftentimes see that. And so, um, you know, living in Palo Alto, I mean, he was the first mayor, African-American mayor of Palo Alto. I mean, there were so many first, uh, the first African-American uh, member of the Olympic Club in 1989. So there's so many firsts with with Mr. Clay, and and so this is an honor opportunity to to pay homage to him and and to uh, honor him uh, for his probably 50 plus years of really having an impact in this community uh, in Silicon Valley. Yeah, he continues to have an impact, but in a way, you've kind of carried that forward. Well, I I, I had never thought about it that way, but um, but yes, I I think that um, I learn a lot uh, from him and and his. His um, as a businessman, as well as um, his focus always on community, and really um, also on technology. And um, you know, we started a tech program many years ago, really trying to get kids exposed to technology at an early age. Mr. Clay, Clay was an engineer uh, by trade, and so he always focused on, you know, we need to get kids um, connected to these valley uh, companies and in tech. And when you think about today, all the talk about diversity and inclusion. Uh, well, he's an example. It started at HP, and uh, the HP way. It started with David Packard, and 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 Roy, Mr. Clay was was instrumental in bringing in uh, so many uh, uh, key uh, uh, people now in the valley. You know, Ken Coleman. I mean, you can go down the list of African Americans in this valley that are successful that were here because of of Mr. Clay. Great story to hear. A lot of things have changed in twenty five years. A lot of new challenges for young people. One of the biggest challenges right now is housing, and you're actually addressing that now. Yes, this year, um, actually a few years ago, our, my board of directors, we had a, uh, a strategic plan where we really focused on where were, where were we finding significant gaps in our services. And and it kind of goes back to how we started. We started Unity Care by opening one home. And what we realized was with the housing crisis that's going on right now in this valley, which is impacting just everyone, our kids are absolutely being impacted <clears throat> at 10 times the rate because our kids are oftentimes unforgotten. They're, they're unknown. So we've aggressively looked at expanding our housing capacity. And our goal is over the next three years, we want to add another 150 beds of housing um, um, here in the Bay Area because we know that if we want to eradicate the housing, homeless issues for kids in foster care, we're going to need um, partners uh, developers, uh, funders to come and join this initiative to focus on creating enough housing capacity, specifically targeting uh, our young folks that age out of foster care. Uh, I just read a report uh, through the Community Foundation that said people between the ages of 18 and 35, 36% of them live at home with a parent, 36%. So imagine our kids that age out of foster care that don't have a parent go home too. So our goal is we do not want to see one single youth that aged out of foster care become homeless. And we are aggressively addressing the homeless issues that impact kids in foster care. And our goal is to eradicate the housing homeless issues that impact them. Best of luck with that. I know it's a huge challenge right now. 
So I know you couldn't accomplish Youth Live without supporting people, including some sponsors. Who's sponsoring Youth Live this year? Absolutely, Sam. Great question. Last year, we honored Linda Lester as our community champion. And this year, it's Linda Lester and Darlene Woodson. And they have such a special journey, and they've connected with us as an organization. Um, you know, Linda is very philanthropic in the community, and, and Darlene herself is an adoptive um, uh, foster parent and became an a adoptive uh, parent. Um, so they are our presenting sponsors, as well as other sponsors. We have Heritage Bank, uh, Air Systems, Silicon Valley Community Foundation, uh, Insperity, uh, Mattress Firm, and many other sponsors that are, are there partnering with us for this year's event. Couldn't do it without them. Couldn't do it without them. So everybody says that uh, local philanthropists and people who are in the tech industry are the people who attend Youth Live. But the truth is... Anybody who cares about young people and the support that you give should want to attend, in my opinion. And you've got some tab- some tables left. Absolutely. I think that when we think about what the individual person can do, regardless of if you work in tech or if you work in hospitality, wherever you work, and the individual person that wants to say, I want to pay forward and do something today to uh, reach out and engage uh, Unity Care to be a part of the solution, come out and join us. Yes, tickets are going fast, and we want folks to, the event's going to be sold out, and we want people to uh, all have an opportunity of coming out and being a part of uh, that evening, which was going to be a really special evening. Right, Stedman Graham, Roy Clay Sr., and a surprise MC this Absolutely. year. Absolutely. That Absolutely. should be great. <laughs> it's Saturday, August 25th, 6 o'clock at Club Auto Sport, which is a great venue. It's a great venue. Yeah, terrific uh, place to actually have a party. And you can get tickets by going to www.youth-live.com, www.youth-live.com. Andrew Chapman, always a pleasure. Well, thank you, Sam. You've been a great supporter of us. And as I said, this is our year of paying gratitude to the people that have been a part of this journey, and that's been you. So I, I offer you homage and gratitude. My pleasure. Thank you.